In this video, we're going to work a little bit more with function notation. So we're going to look at, look at question 8 and question 9. And in this, we um, have seen this set of data before, where our input is the average monthly temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, T, and the home electric bill in dollars, B. And we want to represent this in function notation. We're saying that the function um, name is W. And so we want to start with the output variable, because the output equals whatever our input is dictating to us. And so then we have the function name, w of the input variable, which is t. So this is how we would write our function. And now when we evaluate, and evaluate, if you look above, evaluate means that we know the input variable, or the input quantity. And in this case, I know that my input is 73, and so I look over here in 73, so then I know my output is going to be 102. And so when I write my uh, solution, I can say a couple different things. I can say W of 73 is equal to 102. If your statement is written in function notation, you do not need to label it. However, if you are not writing in function notation, then we do have to label the 102, and we have to label what it is. The other way we can write it in the um, shortened version or the condensed version of the function notation, because remember, this output w or b also can be written as b of t, and we'll spend a lot more time looking with the shortened version or the condensed version versus the expanded version, but this is going to come in handy later on. But we will be using also the shortened version. And so we could also answer this question by simply saying B of 73 equals 102. Or if you don't want to use function notation, we can also say that B, which is the electric bill's cost is $102. And so here we have to label it because it's no longer in function notation. When it's in function notation, we have defined variables. Here we're not quite sure what B is, so we have to make sure that we label it. The other part of the statement is saying, what does this mean in context to the problem? So as with all things, since we're talking about covariation, there's always an input part of the statement and an output part of the statement because both pieces must um, be involved. So we're going to say um, when or if the temperature is 73 degrees Fahrenheit, and now my output part, the cost or the bill, is $102. So that's how we would state that in context. Notice here that we're talking about evaluating, and then down here we're talking about solve. We've seen these um, statements already. Evaluate is simply if you know the input, and you can look at that from up above in the box up here, and solve is going to be hey, know the output So know the input, find the output, know the output, find the input. So in this one, we're going to, we know that the output is 180, so we look in this column, and we can find our answer to be 91. And so now we've got to figure out how to write this appropriately. So we can use our um, function notation by saying w of, and now our t value that we just found is 91. And that's going to equal our 180 degrees, or I'm sorry, 180 um, dollars. We can also write it using the shortened version, which would be B of 91 equals 180. Or we could simply say that 
t, because that's what we're trying to find, because this is what's unknown to us, is the t. Where what we do know is the output. So we're trying to find the input. And so we would say t equals 91 degrees Fahrenheit if we wanted to answer in that way. So any of these three options would be acceptable. Um, and now we want to answer it again in, in a complete sentence. So we know that 91 is the temperature. So if the temp is 91 degrees Fahrenheit, the bill is $180. So now in question 9 we want to look at um, this scenario and so we're talking about the function name being m. Our input is a and our output is g. So our function name being m, we want to start with the output g equals, and then our function name m of our input, which is a. And so when we evaluate m of 10, so I'm going to look here and I am going to, m is my input quantity. So I know this because I'm evaluating, so I know the input. And so I'm going to go and look at my 10 and go up to here. I'm going to read over and notice that this is about 7. And so my answer is going to be m of 10 equals 7. And if we wanted to write that in terms of, um, without using function notation, we would say g equals 7 gallons. And then in terms of what does it mean in context, we're going to say the cost of $10 buys seven gallons of gas. Now when we go to solve, this time we know the output of 20. And so I'm going to look here at the 20. And so I'm going to go from the 20 to where I intersect on the graph, and then I'm going to come down, and it looks to be about 37, and so my answer now would be m of 37 equals 20. We could also write it using um, the other, we can say g of 37 equals 20 if we wanted the uh, shortened version. We can also just say, since we're finding the A, we're going to say A equals, and that answer was $37. So then when we write our statement, we say um, paying $37 buys twenty gallons of gas. Okay. The last thing we want to talk about here is the vertical intercept. If you recall, probably on your big idea sheet, the vertical intercept is zero something. It's the point where the graph crosses the vertical axes. So that point is going to be right here. 
And so it appears to be the point 0, 2. Right? So it doesn't ask for practical meaning, but we're going to talk more about practical meaning. We want to say, so the input is the cost, the output is the gallon, so paying zero dollars buys two gallons of gas. That statement doesn't really make sense, it's not practical, so we'd say, therefore, the vertical intercept has no practical meaning. 